Today I want to talk with you about ovarian torsion. This is a diagnosis that must not be missed. I will start by reviewing the vascular supply to the ovaries. The ovarian arteries come off the distal aorta and supply the ovaries. At the same time, there is a second blood supply which branches from the uterine artery, giving the ovaries a dual blood supply. Torsion may occur at any age, but it is most common in women of childbearing age. The surest sign of ovarian torsion is a sudden onset of severe low abdominal pain or pelvic pain, usually striking during exercise or other vigorous moments. Although some women report mild pain, the pain is usually severe and worsens over a period of a few hours. The pain is usually isolated to the affected ovary but can radiate through the pelvis, back and or thigh. Approximately 25% of patients experience bilateral lower quadrant pain described as sharp and stabbing or less frequently crampy. Nausea and vomiting occur in approximately 70% of the times. The risk factors. What are the risk factors for ovarian torsion? Women with enlarged ovaries and an elongated fallopian tubes are at an increased risk for ovarian torsion. Such conditions can result from pregnancy, menopause, large ovarian cysts and tumors. Approximately 4 cm cyst has a 15% chance of torsion. Previous pelvic surgeries especially tubal ligations and congenital malformations typically found in young children diagnosed with ovarian torsion. Another cause is an ovarian ligament connecting the ovary to the uterus, which may be longer than usual. A longer ovarian ligament makes ovarian torsion more likely. Torsion can also occur in normal ovaries. In 80%, torsion happens unilaterally, with slight predominance on the right. The risk is greater in pregnant women and those suffering from menopause. The diagnosis may be made by Doppler sonogram, MRI, or pelvic CT. The differential diagnosis should include intrauterine pregnancy, ectopic pregnancy, appendicitis, PID, and tubal ovarian abscess. The treatment of torsion includes laparoscopy and or surgical removal. The pearls and pitfalls. Ovarian torsion is a difficult diagnosis due to vague symptoms and nonspecific labs and imaging. It is important to keep this diagnosis in the differential and maintain clinical suspicion for torsion when another pathology has been ruled out. The dual blood supply to the ovary can also be deceiving, so the presence of blood supply on ultrasound does not rule out torsion when clinical suspicion is high. Ultrasound cannot absolutely rule out torsion due to the possibility that the patient can have intermittent torsion. Remember that gynecologic consultation may be necessary and direct visualization by surgical evaluation is the only way to make a definitive diagnosis. The patient, here's another pitfall. The patient was only six years old. I didn't consider a gynecologic cause for her pain. Although gynecologic causes of abdominal pain are uncommon in children, ovarian torsion 
can occur at any age. The differential diagnosis for any patient with concerning symptoms need to include ovarian torsion, regardless of age. Even premenarchal patients need a pelvic sonogram, which can be done transabdominally. Here's another pitfall. Since the patient was previously found to have an ovarian cyst, I did not think we need to re-image. Ovarian cysts are known to predispose patients to ovarian torsion, especially when intermediate size is 5 centimeters or greater. A patient with a previous history of an ovarian cyst and acute pelvic pain must be evaluated for ovarian torsion and repeat ultrasound is indicated. Here's another pitfall. She told me that the pain had been coming and going and that she has had similar episodes of pain previously, so I didn't think it was anything serious. Many patients with ovarian torsion will report previous episodes of similar pain. Intermittent torsion has been well described and patients can have spontaneous torsion and detorsion and may not seek medical attention until they have episodes that is prolonged or more serious than they have previously experienced. A history of previous pain should actually raise your suspicion for ovarian torsion and trigger further investigation. Here are some take home points. Sudden onset of abdominal pain should raise concern. The pain may be mild but becomes severe eventually. Pain may be intermittent and even subsides because of detorsion. Torsion may occur at any age. 60% of torsion occurs on the right side. It should always be in the differential diagnosis. Don't miss it. Well, thanks for watching. Some of the content is from emergencymedicinepractice.net. Please sign up for their monthly publication. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I wish you well. Good night.